face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up you guys and of course welcome to another episode of the Who Was Really Better and this week we're gonna cover the two poison grass types in Valplume versus Victory Bell. Yeah, these are basically the Pokemon that was besides Venusaur is a very very viable option in generation one and onward. Now Victory Bell had a bit of a I should say lead way from generation one. Recently of course I won a crit rate which made it superior to Valplume. Once Valplume got Giga Range actually was on par with one another. Victory represented more of an offensive option while Valplume represented more of a defensive option and of course Venusaur in between and yeah, it's up to me to go over their overarching stats, move pool, and overarching theme to find out which one of these two really are better. We're gonna start off with the Victory Bell. Now, Victory Bell is a very interesting option. I should go over their combination of um, typing first, just cover it very briefly. It's a good defensive typing. Grass, Poison, cover what I would say the worst from Poison, which is actually nullifying uh, ground damage. We have stronger resistance in Grass, Resist to Electric, Fairy, Finding a Water, are weak to Fire, Flying, Ice, and Psychic. So overall, while there are things to watch out for, there's nothing that a regular Grass type doesn't have to watch out for. The Poison actually defensively help it quite a lot, only giving it one extra weakness, and that is in Psychic, which is easy to predict, since Psychic is, in general, a bad offensive typing. So overall, Grass and Poison, one of the best combination defensively and pretty much offensively in the game. However, when it comes to Victory Bell itself, it really isn't a very strong defensive options. It's very easy just on the stats to see that, yeah, while it has decent HP, it's clear that it isn't that defensive. What, 80 in HP, 65 in its defense, and 70 in its special defense. It is offensive, though. 105 in its attack and 100 in its special attack is very fair, but it isn't speedy. It isn't a glass cannon by any chance. This is a Pokemon that is pretty average, pretty much below average, still hit hard, which isn't the greatest combination. And this is where, of course, this ability Chlorophyll comes in. This makes sure to outspeed base 165 Pokemon if it decides to be timid or jolly. And just overall, it's a very, very speedy threat that can focus on its offensive stats very well, actually. And of course, the HP, like I said, it's a fair bulk, and just defenses aren't necessarily there. But when you take into account that you don't have to invest in speed necessarily, Victory Bell become a very, very decent defensive check to a lot of things. And with the speed in mind and offensive stance you call for, it is a very dangerous Pokemon force to deal with. We also have another ability in Gluttony, and in Gluttony, actually, it's kind of fine. Even more so in this generation due to the Figgy Berry and whatnot. This could be a secondary recovery for it, and of course, the Pinch Berries in general, because Gluttony makes sure the Pinch Berries that are boosted and activated by 75% are now activated by 50%. This could actually turn Victory Bell to, like I said, a potential defensive Pokemon if you decide to take that route. Uh, but overall, Victory Bell is a very, very strong threat and one of the best chlorophyll sweepers in the game. And we're going over just why that is, and that is, of course, its smooth pool. Because Victory Bell is a very strange bean, it has a lot of things going for it that makes it very interesting. First and foremost, we have Stockpile and the Swallow and whatnot. Stockpile is where that, and of course, the C Normalium C variant, with the book able to recover if you don't want to bother yourself for synthesis, that is. But that's an option, that's what I'm trying to say. Sleep Powder, which makes sure that, of course, a Pokemon is asleep. We have a Leaf Storm and Leaf Blade to get rid of the likes of Solar Beam, a really, really strong stab, even Energy Ball, and of course, Giga Drain. And when it comes to the Poison stab, we have Sludge Bomb, which is pretty much all you need. And we do have Vendor Shock, but I don't necessarily find that that interesting. We also have set up in Swat Stance, so we have Physical Move and Physical Stab, and like I said, Leaf Blade and then Poison Jab. Uh, when it comes to the egg moves, there are a few things standing out here. And the one I really like myself here is that we get the likes of Leech Life this generation, which is awesome. This means that potentially that you can become a mixed sweeper with a Salt Vest, which is always extremely likable. Uh, and then we have a Weather Ball, which makes sure that, of course, that you're, if you are using this in the sunny day, you're going to have a 100 base fire move. And that's a very rare thing to see. We also have Belch, which is very, very good acid spray, which I don't believe I need to cover. Lower than its special defense by two if you're if it's used, so clearly I, I, I talked about it anyway. And we also have clear smog, so a lot of really strong filler moves. 
Uh, and of course, probably the biggest thing in ultrasound and move, which is strength sap, which ensure that you recover as much of the attack of your opposing Pokemon in HP, and of course, lower that attack, which is, like I said before, a very, very viable option. While uh, Victor Bell usually run the lines of life for, but it's still a very good thing to strength sap something to be able to recover your HP back, but also kind of shift them and lower their attack and actually be able to take their hit better. Uh, which, like I said, it's a very rare trait. And when it comes to mutual moves, the one standing out here is a synthesis and knockoff. Knockoff primarily because it does make sure that you can be uh, a defensive annoyer, and I think Victor Bell can solve that role kind of fine uh, and just be an nuisance in general. Um, other than that, I guess we just have a transfer move, which isn't that interesting. We have a priority in Sucker Punch, which which is really, really cool because of the 105 attack that actually could be extremely helpful. And of course, from generation two, we have a curse. And while you have growth and it can work in the Sunday area, if you want to go for a more defensive variant, um, a white herb growth or curse variant could be an, an interesting option. But overall, it's very clear that this Pokemon is a very clear cut sweeper, even more so with said before. The sunny day to get over the likes of Weather Ball, Solar Beam, Sludge Bomb, or Sludge Wave, or even Sea Belch to get it with Strength Sap. It really is one of those Pokemon that stands out quite a lot because offensively, I would say it's much better than the likes of Victor Bell, which I think is the most famous uh, Sunday Sweeper because it's individually it's stronger than Victor Bell, but in the sun, Victor Bell is definitely standing out. And like I said, it's probably, if not the best Sun Sweeper in the whole game. So it's whether or not this offensive prowess is even comparable to Valplume's more defensive aspect in the meta. So yeah, Valplume is just as interesting as Victor Bell, really. While it isn't as, obviously as you guys can see, as offensively active, it still has a higher special attack than Victor Bell. So it's not that it is weak by any chance. It is clearly more defensive, however. We have 75 in HP, which is lower than Victor Bell. 80 in attack, which is clearly lower. 85 in defense and 90 in special defense. So yeah, 20 in each stat more bulky. While it isn't as, as stated before, as much HP, it is clearly stronger and better than Victor Bell taking hits. And the special attack, of course, larger, means that we are going to see a speed stat, which is not necessarily that good. Victor Bell is not the speediest Pokemon, but Valplum is definitely on the slower side at 50 base speed, which means that the chlorophyll aspect of Valplum really isn't that important. While chlorophyll will ensure that you have speed base 120 Pokemon, which I think it's fair, it still isn't why you're gonna use Valplum any day soon and effect spore. While being its best ability isn't necessarily that good of an ability. Uh, you have, if you are hit by a contact move, you have 30% chance of getting a status in randomized, basically you can paralyze, sleep, and of course poison. A really, really, I would say, situational ability, and I much more would prefer what actually Victor Bill got in Gluttony, which I think would have been much, much more viable for Valplume's option. However, it isn't actually the defensive aspect in its abilities we're going to talk about. It is its defensive aspect to its move pool that is Valplume's Edge. And I'll say it's an interesting one at that. It's very, very viable and relevant towards it. First and foremost, we have Aromatherapy, which do ensure that you can actually be more of a cleric aspect to the team, which is always a nice thing. And then we have the likes of Gatorade, Solar Beam as always, Energy Ball, Sludge Bomb, which is definitely a good filler. For being the combination of dual stab. We also have infestation and sword stance, which really help require a lot to it. Infestation, one of that would get it with of course being able to toxic stall. When it comes to its egg move that stands out, the thing really isn't tickling me that much to do we get tickled. Uh, we also have charm, synthesis, which is a viable option, and uh, nature power, which makes sure that you can actually use your nature power in terrain and consider how generation seven's meta has been developing, having a Tapu Lele or of course a Tapu Koko in your team can be very very interesting. Uh, it also actually gets Moonblast and Dazzlingly which is something that has an edge over Victor Bell. Uh, while it isn't helping as like Pokemon quite a lot, it still is an aspect of filler moves that it does get which is always something that makes it interesting. Also here the best move coming out of Ultra Sun and Moon to the problem is the Strength Sap. Uh, same thing here. You know, recovers the same amount of HP, and while it has a lower HP stat, that only means it has more to recover in aspect to it because you don't have necessarily to invest in it. 
Other than that, we also have Gastro Acid, which nullifies abilities. We have Drain Punch and Snore, which is kind of cool. Uh, other than that, when it comes to um, moves that you can send to, the only thing standing out here, I really mean that, as necessarily doesn't get anything interesting, but it does get Reflect, which, as I said before, makes it a very supported Pokemon. The thing is here, Valplume is used to be a defensive check towards a lot of Pokemon, and I think it's able to do just that fine. Strange Sap is one of those things that stands out with that, because you're already defensively really, really well-rounded, and Strange Sap only kind of stop for that kind of aspect. Valplume usually go to defensive route that aren't a shouldn't be able to actually invest in the speed. You don't need to do that. And Valplum is showing that when Amoongus actually was vanished from UU in the, the meta of Generation 7, it took its place and it took its place just fine that it actually was used more often than not. While it didn't make UU, it still is a very notable thing that it could fill that role and it filled that role really well because of the strength sap and being able to kind of nullify offensive threats. That's usually threatening it. For example, Inferno was always a switching towards that and bit getting strength sap and full recover and nullifying flare blitzing was really something that was unheard of and it only speaks to how Valplum is such an interesting Pokemon. While it doesn't give a lot to the meta, it's still one of those Pokemon that defensively is extremely well-rounded and shouldn't be underestimated at all. So what this matchup really boils down to, and I'm being completely honest here, is whether or not what the Valplum do, which is less than Victor Bell, is better than what Victory already does. Victor Bell does already what Valplum does, but has more flexibility and move pool to that, and it really could just solve the same type of function as it clearly already does. And I think that's kind of an interesting part, because this is one of the few times where even though Victor Bell clearly can do the same and you know, has a, a sweeping aspect, I still would say that the Valplume is better. And it has a lot to do with how the Pokemon functions. Victor Bell is a very subpar defensively, and that's not something that's going to go away. The extra defensive, and of course being able to strength up and doing that better, really talks for Valplume's flexibility and move pull. It really isn't one of those Pokemon that will it change the matter or anything like that, but Victory Bell's semi-function is actually important with being a Sun Sweeper. It really can't be much more than that. Valplum, while it necessarily can't be a Sun Sweeper, can defensively shake a large portion of the meta, even seven generations from it was created. It just is a Pokemon that keeps on getting better. Well, Victor Bell being a bit stagnated, while not bad by any chance, it really is a viable option. It's very clear that Valplum is clear cut could be a defensive shake it was built to and was created for. Well, the Victor Bell, while getting the same option, isn't built for do the same thing, which is why it, of course, has fallen behind quite a lot in this generation. With that said, of course, I do kind of want to reach out and say that Victor Bell is still an interesting Pokemon to use in the lower tiers, defensively like Valplume, but it's very clear that Valplume, due to its stats, as stated before already, really is doing something that I think Victor Bell is lacking and even with priorities, even with the weather ball, Victor Bell is like I said still born to function in the sun. Besides that, it really isn't that impressive. While I do like Victory Bell myself, I even prefer it over Valplume, I really can't deny that Valplume's overarching function really is is to be respected, if anything. It really has showcased to be a Pokemon that while it doesn't do as well as the big boys like Among Us, it still has showcased that it could very well keep up and with Strength Sap in mind, it will win that matchup. Strength Sap is something that really has made a Valplum a very, very interesting Pokemon to force to be dealing with because it's very hard to take out. And that's something you don't see nowadays because in a metagame where we keep on developing how to offensively check Pokemon, Valplu comes in to showcase it can defensively check and force our Pokemon and that, like I said, is a trait that is very rare and Valplu represents a bit of an underdog in that because all of a sudden it's a very viable option and UU it has been showcased in the league aspect. Valplu is very hard to deal with head-on because it's defensively so hard to take out and it hurts so much because of that 110 special attack. It really is a deviant to be forced to be dealing with. And that is why Valplum is the better here. It really is no questions asked.
So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and sorry for of course not being able to upload. And we're gonna follow this up next week with a matchup I wanted to do for quite some time. And it is about the spin blocking stealth rockers. So enjoy guys. <laughs>